on their Tigers of Clemson. See if Florida State can give them a test. I think they're conflicted. You know, they, don't, they hate South Carolina, yeah. but they really would like to see South Carolina knock off Georgia. Good point. It's been a wild week seven already around college football. Kind of the week we've all been waiting for. And so here it is. Florida State has won the toss. They'll defer. Both of these schools coming off their bye weeks. Super hyped, super prepped, and we are underway. Joseph Nagata will take a knee in the end zone for the touchback. All eyes on Trevor Lawrence. Lots of talk this week. Is he okay? How's the throwing shoulder grease? I think everything's fine. I haven't seen anything on tape uh, just to prove otherwise. I think he's just, this is like kind of a little sophomore opportunity for him to kind of step up, grow up into the leadership role of this Clemson team. Christian Wilkins is gone. Cleveland Farrell's gone. Those leaders are gone. It's on number 16 shoulders. And today's another great opportunity for him this season. It's on his shoulders, and yet Clemson has said they want to get back to running the football here today. That's Amari Rodgers in motion. They come out throwing. Lawrence will take a deep shot down the sideline for T. Higgins. And it's caught. So all that, we're going to get back to running the football. Come out with a big pass play. It's a gain of 40. Dabo told us yesterday he wants to throw the ball deep. He wants to take advantage of some of these corners. That's Asante Samuel at 5'10 against T. Higgins at 6'4. First down and 10. Pitch to Travis Etienne. He's going to throw the football. Etienne throws up for grabs and Justin Ross hauls it in. While Clemson has come out on fire, beating Asante Samuel for the second time. It's a gain of 33. Right off the bat, you see Davo Sweeney wants to take this game by control. Two shots down the field on Asante Samuel. They've already taken Samuel out. Isaiah Bolden is checked in. And we get our first flag of the afternoon. Jeff Heiser is our referee. You'll hear from him shortly. Davo came into this stadium. He went to the rock and he got fired up trying to get this crowd into this game right from the moment he stepped in the stadium and now he's doing it on the field aggressive play calling trying to take this game to Florida State on the ground ETN inside the 10 finally stopped at about the six yard line I think this is going to be the plan all day long. You've got the mob in the middle. You've got almost a thousand pounds worth of defensive linemen for Florida State, the three interior defensive linemen. So it's run outside and it's throw vertical. That I think it's going to be an aggressive approach today for Clemson. On the ground, ETN banging heads just short of a first down. You're about third down and one inside the five. It's a gain of two on the play. Todd mentions that mob. It's led by number 21 right there, Marvin Wilson. He's 6'5", 311 pounds. He's the best defensive player for Florida State. He's almost impossible to move off the line of scrimmage. Robert Cooper, his line mate, and Corey Durden make up the, the rest of that defensive front. They will not be easy to move down here inside the five. Two tight ends for Clemson on third and one. ETN won't get there. It's a loss on the play. Big stop by Corey Durden in the middle of that defensive line for Florida State. It's fourth down and a decision. We talked about a Corey Durden. Here he is right here. He's just going to come right around the tackle. That's Ankrum. You can't overset that play. Ankrum went too far, and it was an easy stop for Durden. I said in a decision. Is there a decision here? Well, I think the way that, that Dabo came into this game aggressive, this is not a surprise at all, but Dabo might see how they line up and call a timeout at the last second. Fourth and one. Lawrence will pitch the ETN. He's going to get there. Standing up for the touchdown. That'll go down on the books. The touchdown pass the bottom line. Clemson strikes first and quickly down the field. 
A smart play call by Tony Elliott. It's the option. They're going to have Gainer. He's going to come up the field. And as soon as he does, that's when the pitch happens. Great read from Lawrence. Perfectly executed. They pull Simpson onto the linebacker. That's a walk in for ETN. E.T. Potter on the extra point. And 7 nothing clutch about the worst possible start for Florida State. There's no easing into this one for the Seminoles. You had the sense meeting with Clemson this week that they were going to come into this game. Everybody's telling them, oh, everybody's dropping them in the rankings, right? Oh, yeah, one-point game. Should have lost against Carolina on a two-point conversion. That's all they've been hearing about, ETN. We've been hearing about what's wrong with Trevor Lawrence. You knew they were going to come out with a concerted effort and a great first drive. You see the motion from Davos Sweeney. And you see what happens when Clemson scores first. They are impossible to beat. Again, officially that goes to the touchdown pass. Trevor Lawrence will never throw an easier touchdown pass. 16th consecutive game with a scoring pass. He's going to at least one touchdown in 20 of his 21 now career games. The only game without a touchdown pass was that game last season against Syracuse, which he was hurt in. Potter will kick it away. Keyshawn Helton is back for Florida State. He'll let it bounce into the end zone. Some hesitation, some gamesmanship going on with the starting quarterback for Florida State. A couple of weeks ago in their last game against North Carolina State, the whole world was told to be James Blackman and Alex Hornibrook ran out. That's going to be James Blackman's game. We're going to see Alex Hornibrook at some point. They're very different quarterbacks, but James Blackman has earned the leadership role on this offense. The team loves him. Alex Hornibrook can play this game, there's no question. But Blackman gets to start based on his leadership and relationships alone. Here's Blackman going to keep it on the option. He'll stumble forward for a couple. Blackman. And Akers can't come up with the football. Third down and eight. Well, everybody had the questions coming into the season for Clemson defensively, losing their entire front seven outside of Isaiah Simmons. How would they be? And they have been up to snuff. Flag flies. Blackman pass is complete. Amazing to get it in to Tamari and Terry in a small window. Illegal substitution. Defense. Penalties decline. Results of the play. First down. It's a big time throw there for James Blackman. Third down, right off the bat. Third and long. Third and ten. Stands in there and finds his best receiver in Terry. There's Cam Akers approaching Cam midfield. What a day for college football in the state of South Carolina. The Gamecocks go to Georgia and knock off number three. Meanwhile, here at Clemson, South Carolina, the Tigers score quickly in first. Here's James Blackman, fumbled it, recovered it, and then that pass is incomplete. Steve Levy, along with Brian Greasy, Todd McShay, Molly McGrath on the field. For those of you just joining us, Clemson got the football, and they went up top for 40 yards immediately to T. Higgins. Then Travis Etienne took a handoff and threw the football to Amari Rogers. And just like that, six plays, 75 yards, less than three minutes. The Tigers were on the board. This is the first possession for Florida State now. Four minutes in. Blackman able to complete. Gain of two on the play to Ontario Wilson. And it's going to be fourth down. Uh -huh. 
Tommy Martin is standing back at his 35. Darian Kendrick back to receive for Clemson. Out of bounds, and we'll get some good field position to start for the Clemson Tigers. With that, we can officially say good afternoon. What a start for Clemson. What a start to the college football yeah. game, right? I think of the 80,000 fans here probably haven't seen yet that South right. Carolina upset Georgia. They have to be torn, right? They hate South yeah. Carolina here, but they probably need to have Georgia lose a game for their playoff hopes. And a good reminder to these Clemson Tigers, too. Anytime you step out <laughs> onto the field, be aware. Be afraid. Great start by Clemson. An aggressive start by Clemson, pushing the ball down the field. They do not want to have another situation like what happened in Chapel Hill. They have been aggressive from the jump. Trevor Lawrence to throw. Gets it out to Amari Rogers, trying to make people miss. Out to the 20-yard line. Wrestled down, and a flag comes in. Amari Gaynor maybe a little too excited. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number 33, 15-yard penalty, first down. That's the redshirt freshman, made his first start a couple of weeks ago, had an impact. Yeah, and he's starting because Janaris Robinson, the, the starter traditionally for Florida State on the outside, is not playing in the first half of this game because of a targeting last week, so uh, Gaynor right off the bat hurt his team. Last drive for Clemson, two long throws right off the bat. Both of them are targeting Asante Samuel, and then a little double move on the outside. You see ETN gives Justin Ross an opportunity, and then the shovel pass, a great call on third down for the, for the touchdown. ETN is out. Lynn J. Dixon has checked in. And he'll take the football. His first carry of the afternoon squeezes through the middle. And runs into big Marvin Wilson. All 6'5", 311 pounds of him. But not until it was a gain of five. We were talking with Marvin Wilson yesterday. And uh, he's, got a, he's got the right disposition to be a, a defensive tackle. He was not happy. He wanted to come out here and hit somebody. They feel very confident in their run defense. They're not as confident, obviously, in the pass defense as we've seen. But Wilson was confident they could slow this Clemson rush, rush attack. Said Trevor Wilson, just another quarterback. Another quarterback I want to take his head off of. Well, let's see. Chasing Lawrence down now. And that pass goes incomplete. Corey Durden had the pressure on Lawrence. Fourth down, upcoming. What a nice job, Florida State defensively. Their defensive coordinator, Harlan Barnett, coming up with a game plan on third down to, uh, to confuse Trevor Lawrence on that last snap and force a punt. With an assist from Jim Levitt, the defensive analyst, and that's a major story in what has already transpired for Florida State this season. DJ Matthews back for a short punt. Takes a Florida State bounce. Seminoles will start from the 30, trailing. Go Blankenship, no good. South Carolina upsets the third-ranked Bulldogs 20 to 17. Steve, Brian Todd, back to you. Blankenship, one of the more reliable oh kickers the around most, the country. The most reliable. From 55, he's good. I mean, if, if you had to pick one kicker to make that kick right. in college football right now, it would be Rodrigo Blankenship. And earlier in the overtime, South Carolina actually missed a chip shot of a field goal. Got a second chance. Here's Cam Akers, the do-it-all running back for Florida State. But Todd McShay, they need a wide receiver to make a play. Yeah, Tamari and Terry is the guy. He's a, the big difference maker. We know about Cam Akers at the running back position, but Terry is the guy that they've got to target in the passing game. And I think it's going to have to be quick. This offensive line has struggled in protection. They've got to get the ball out quickly and give them some shots vertically. Here's Blackman nearly slipped down. He'll throw on the run. And he's throwing that one away. It'll be a third down and eight. Yeah. Shea looking rather spiffy today. I'm yeah, it does look good. That pink tie. Yeah. I love that. No, he's right. This offensive line has been the issue. And it's no secret. And it was the same last year. The year before, it's been a reoccurring issue. And these five guys up front, they're doing the best that they can. They're not as talented. 
they're not as strong. That's the thing that when you talk with their coaching staff, they're not strong enough yet. They have a heavy dose today up front. Third down and eight. Some pressure. Blackman hit as he throws. And too high for Terry. James Skalski put a lick on Blackman. And it's fourth down. And you know Brent Venables. You know what he's going to do, right? He's going to bring pressure. Skalski and Smith both off the strong side. Blackman gets rid of that football. And that's been too familiar a sight for Florida State fans. Their quarterback under duress. But you know this, this defense of Brent Venables, they are not going to take it easy. Skalski's the guy who was quite frank Very young, going to that North Carolina game. He said, we didn't have a great week of practice. And that showed, able to hang on, stop a two-point conversion with a minute 17 left for a one-point win at North Carolina. Kendrick runs up. The fair catch up to the 35. Down to Molly. Well, Steve, some people are saying that Clemson doesn't deserve to be ranked in the top four. Well, guess what? Quarterback Trevor Lawrence agrees with them, telling me we haven't been playing like a top four team. We didn't even deserve that number one ranking because that was based off what we accomplished last year. This year's team hasn't earned anything. Lawrence took responsibility for their offensive issues and said our best players haven't played their best, me included, and admitted he's been in his own head, overthinking a lot of throws, but he looks pretty refreshed and motivated early on, Steve. Now, in fairness, Molly, that conversation was before Georgia lost. You got to put Clemson <laughs> in the top four now with Georgia being bounced out. I agree with Trevor Lawrence's assessment. They, they have not played but, uh, to their, certainly to their talent level. And, but the, the good news is that they are 5-0 and and they've won their last 20 games and Trevor Lawrence has all the skill sets that, you, that he had coming into this season and people said this is the best player in college football. He still has the opportunity to do that this season. Once was a co-favorite with Tua to win the Heisman this season. He's now at 50-1. to 1. Here's Travis Etienne. He has first down yardage. And if you want to pick on one player from that one-point victory at North Carolina, the coaches all said circle number nine. Travis Etienne had an all-around bad day. No, yeah. way to, no way to candy coat that. Yeah. No, he didn't block well. That was the biggest issue. He just took a big shot right there. Kind of went down funny he was his legs were tied up and he took a shot to his head keep an eye on him on the sideline pitch to Mari Rogers scooting around Cyrus Fagan makes the stop gain of five take another look at that shot on ATN yeah, this is the play before he's going down and he just kind of gets a shoulder from the safety Fagan right to right to the head dangerous position you get a stinger like that you start to look at the back of the neck that would be a huge blow for Davos Sweeney. Dixon in the backfield. Lawrence fakes to him and completes to DeAndre Overton. He has the first down. Needed five, got eight. Working on Fagan there. First down for the Tigers. One of the things that, that Davo talked about was just getting some tempo going offensively. They felt like they never got in a rhythm in that affected this quarterback Trevor Lawrence so early on here we're seeing a little bit more tempo and just having some success with some easy throws a little bit of pressure picked up nicely Justin Ross another first down for the Clemson Tigers you know, I think Todd's right you know you got to get Trevor Lawrence into the game you, you don't have to make it too difficult you know one of the things that Clemson has always done really well is throw the deep ball but when when corners start to play off and give cushion they will throw that hitch route on the outside and they will do it play after play until you come up and defend it on first and ten quick toss to higgins able to get four on the play dontavius jackson the stop for florida state travis Etienne is coming in and that is good news for clemson yeah, great news for clemson he is this, this the key in the run game, certainly for, for Clemson. 42 career rushing touchdowns. That's second in Clemson history. If they're going to get where they want to go, they're used to going to the championship game. He's going to need to continue. Had a great year. Six defensive backs. Florida State blitzes. And Clemson runs into that blitz with ETN down to the 10-yard line. Wanted to get him going early. That's a game of 12. They've done just that. We talked about not trying to run to the strength of Florida State's defense in the middle. They're going to run to the outside. That's the stretch play. Exactly what Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott told us in the meetings they wanted to do was get ETN in space and make a play. 
First down and goal. A whole lot of traffic in the backfield. The gain of three on the play. That's ETN another carry. Nasruddin makes the stop for Florida State. Second down and goal upcoming. I feel like Clemson has something to prove today, which is odd. They're playing like they've got something to prove here. Ninth play. Florida State just ran a player off late. Lawrence going to keep this one. Has blockers. Leaves for the goal line and in. Late signal. Touchdown. Clemson. week in crunch time they ran Trevor Lawrence when they needed him the most against Carolina in the red zone inside the 10 yard line we saw Deshaun Watson do this time after time and Trevor Lawrence equally as talented running the football with his length and his size just gets it across the goal line They're taking a look at it to make sure a little body part hit the turf great lead block right there. You see Luke Price He's the under review and again, when you say something to prove, a couple of weeks ago in the last game for Clemson, we keep going back to that one-point win against North Carolina. They had four three-and-outs. They failed to score an eight of 11 drives in that game. And if this touchdown stands, that'll be two scores in three drives here early on in the first quarter. And, and a great response this is clearly a touchdown a great response for, for Clemson after the bye week listening to everybody tell them how bad they are and that they shouldn't be in this conversation right and for for Trevor Lawrence come out and, and he started this game perfect and it's hard right it's hard for a guy like Trevor Lawrence think about what he did a year ago as a true freshman the first time that that's happened to win a national championship since 1985 and to be perfect on the biggest stage the national championship game to beat an Alabama team that a lot of people thought was the best team in the history of college football. And for him to come and follow that up this season, Steve, that is not easy. That's a lot of pressure. And I, I think that's why he doesn't get a break, because he oh. dismantled Alabama. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. You know, if you just had a good first season, you had a few nice things, and people say, all right, sophomore jinx and slump, those kinds of things, but well, he tore apart Bama like Alabama's never been beaten before in a national championship game against the schedule Clemson has faced so far. You're not expecting him to take a step backwards. Football with those Miami Hurricanes in 2003 in terms of a pipeline to the NFL. And that's what Clemson's lost. But you, you look up, and all of a sudden you see they're third in the FBS with pressures, 43% of dropbacks. So Brent Venables give him a lot of credit. You know there's talent here. It's nowhere near the talent level a year ago, but they're still finding a way to get pressure on quarterbacks. And, and really, it's, it's a combination of blitzing, moving around, and utilizing some young talent like Xavier Thomas. Potter puts it in the air and into the end zone. We send it back to Cassidy Hubbard. Thanks, Steve. This Big Play Studio update is brought to you by CarMax. And Kellen Mond's one-yard run capped off a 14-play, 75-yard drive that took over eight minutes. But Alabama has just responded. It's 7-6 to six in the first. Steve Bryan, back to you. Another great game on an outstanding Week 7 college football Saturday sleep. Alex Hornibrook, this is not based specifically on Blackman's play. We expected to see both quarterbacks in this game today, although maybe not so early. Yeah, I mean, two series for Blackman. It's impossible to get in any kind of rhythm, but we'll see what Hornibrook has. Flipping a pitch. It's Terry from Harrison. And on first down, they're able to pick up four. And, and honestly, coming into this game, I felt like Alex Hornibrook gave him a better chance. And not that they were going to have a great chance against this Clemson team, but I think he operates this, this Florida State offense a little bit better. He's more decisive. He's more accurate. Uh, and he's played in a lot of games.
schemes like this. Now, what he hasn't done is play behind an offensive line like this because at Wisconsin, you had a great offensive line. That would leave with that 26-6 record as a starting quarterback. Pitch to Trey McKinney, the tight end, and he's got a first down. As we approach four minutes left in this first quarter, dominated by Clemson, gained a 16 on that play. Yeah, creative play call from offensive coordinator Kendall Bryles. Now the FSU uh, assistant coach. Very similar offense to what he did at Baylor. Here's Hornibrook. Won't get back to the line of scrimmage. He's dragged down by Tyler Davis. And that's part of that new front for Clemson. I think Brent Venables gets a kick out of these new young guys. Sort of injected some youth into his game, too. Yeah, Todd mentioned Xavier Thomas. Justin Foster is a, a leader at the defensive end position. And then you see right in the middle, number 44, Niles Pinckney. He's one of the lone holdovers that played a bunch a year ago. Second and 11. Hornet Brook. Intercepted. Picked off by Tanner News. The super senior in his fifth year. Hornet Brook picked off. And it's a bunch of football. You make a decision to bring in a new quarterback in one of his first throws. Wildly behind an open wide receiver. That could have been a conversion, but instead it's an interception by Muse. The 42, Lawrence. Ball is batted up. Marvin Wilson, second time able to knock down a Trevor Lawrence pass. Knocked it down, but Trevor caught it. And every quarterback needs to add a reception in that stat column, okay? That, did you add did that, you that, one? That fills out the whole stats. How many catches did you have? Uh, Make one of those plays? Yeah, I had some catches. I don't remember how many there were. <laughs> I would have loved to see that. <laughs> none, of, none of which were memorable. I can tell you that. Any for positive yardage? <laughs> Net positive, yes. Got it. Does that count as a completion? You get the catch and the completion? Absolutely. Second and ten. Here's Lawrence rolling to his left. And he'll just tuck it, make some people miss. Get the first down across midfield. Trevor Lawrence. The shoulder appears to be just fine. I think he's I think he is just fine. There's no question about his health and this is what he does. He extends plays. It's so dangerous with his arm, but he can also run and get out of bounds. That's smart. He took a really big shot last week against North Carolina. Dabo Sweeney does not want to see him in that position. Made Amari Gaynor reach for air. Pretty good move there. Goes down to 10. Coming up on two and a half to play in the first quarter. On the ground, here's Dixon and finds a crease. Out to the 42. Gain of five on the play. This Florida State defense, which they felt confident about being able to stop the run coming into this game. You see, they've they've been on the roller skates here in the first quarter. They've got another player down on the field. That's Cyrus Fagan. One clap and a flag, and it's going to be a false start. Offense, number 59, five-yard penalty, second down. Boy, and that's not going to make Dabo Sweeney happy on the sideline. They, this was a reoccurring problem last week, last couple of weeks, and it was because North Carolina was stemming with their defensive line up front. Gates, Cervenka, this time you see him smiling. Like, I cannot believe I just fell for that stem and jumped off sides again. Five pre-snap penalties yeah. against North Carolina. Second one today. Four to snap it. Lawrence on the ground of Dixon. Stays on his feet. Lynn J. Dixon for nine yards. Right, they're going to find out about Lynn J. Dixon. We know ETN took a shot earlier in this game, and it looks like Dixon's going to get more carries than, than normal but you know he was the number three rusher for this team a year ago no more tavian feaster he's gone to south carolina and so now he is the number two back and number one guy to spell etn dabble getting his message across to Cervenka. he's out of the game john simpson has come in and replaced him for now here's etn on third down and one he too will stay on his feet and gain of 11 for the first down and after trying this defense on the edges in the first two drives, now they've loosened it up in between the tackles, and they're starting to come off the football and give some credit to this offensive line. John Simpson that time wrapped around from that left guard position, got a great block. 
Here's Lawrence. Stays on his feet. He'll pick up four. Gainer brought him down. And we're under 30 seconds left. As players come together. This was a Florida State team that spoke of the confidence they had all of a sudden after consecutive wins. And uh, this will hurt. This first quarter will, will leave a sting a little bit. A little black and blue bruise on that recently acquired confidence. You see Florida State in the first quarter all season. By far their best first quarter. Plus 50 on the season. And all of a sudden they find themselves at minus 14 in the last four. Florida State won the four prior to that. Here's ETN, the ball carrier. Florida State's defense is down a man. And we believe that is Janaris Robinson. He was flagged for targeting in the second half of their game against NC State. That means a suspension. Just for the first half of this game, you pick up three targeting penalties across the season, and they give you a full game suspension. But we will see uh, the man they call J-Rob in the second half. It's got to be so odd, right? So the frustrating. Is, the team is out there, right, Todd? And you're sitting there watching from the corner. Here's Lawrence. And the team's not just out there, right? Your team's getting beaten up. And on the way to trailing 21-0, and you're a, a critical part of this defense. You think you could do something about that? And he's just sitting there. He's not even really allowed to watch the game or be a part of it. Can't be on the sideline. So he's sitting in the tunnel. I, I noticed him when I went over to the audio booth when we were in commercial and introduced myself, made sure it was uh, Janarius. And, <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And he's just so frustrated watching on his iPad right now. First down to 10. Hi, Janarius. How you doing? Saying hello. Since you're watching the game on your iPad. We were at BYU a few weeks ago and talked to Kalani Satake, the head coach there. And he made the point, what, do we have to put these poor kids in isolation? He's got to sit there by himself. Oh, wait, couldn't he be on the sideline with his teammates without yeah. his helmet? Yeah. Isn't there a better way than sort of embarrassing these kids even I more? Think, I think it's a good point, uh, and, and I totally agree with Kalani on this. And, and, you know, these things happen real fast. I, I get it. You're trying to get that behavior out of the game, but you don't need to isolate kids. Here's Lawrence to throw as he's hit. Back shoulder, it is. No, incomplete. Justin Ross. And the field judge there was sort of blocked out by Justin Ross's body. Isaiah Bolden had the coverage. Yeah, back shoulder was thrown perfectly. Look where that ball's located. Bolden got a hand in there. It just went right through the breadbasket of, of Justin Ross. And Willie Taggart, we were talking with their defensive coordinator, Harlan Barnett, last night. They're aware of these back shoulder throws and how much Clemson and, and Lawrence like to throw them. Bolden was ready for that one. Can still get a first down. Here's some pressure picked up nicely by Clemson. Middle of the end zone caught. Justin Ross has that one. Touchdown, Tigers. We talked with Tony Elliott, their offensive coordinator, about Travis Etienne and how last week he got beat badly in pass protection against North Carolina. This time, he steps in there, picks up the blitzing linebacker, and that's the only reason why Lawrence has the time to throw that football. Give credit to Etienne for coming back from a, a poor game a week ago, two weeks ago, excuse me, against North Carolina. Extra point on the way and good. Three red zone trips for the Tigers in Clemson history. The one thing that was missing from his game a week, two weeks ago, was pass protection. He stood in there now, gave Trevor Lawrence an opportunity to throw that football. Dabo Sweeney challenged him this week, and he has responded. Potter kicks it away. Florida State needs some kind of spark. And, Brian, I thought it was interesting talking to Dabo Sweeney. He said... In front of the entire team, talking to ETN, hey, it's a good thing that you have great tape and a bunch of other great tapes showing that you can block because what you put on tape last week with the lack of protection and the fumble it would make you a fifth round draft pick. Yeah. He said, I know you're better than that. And I know he is too. ETN has shown that he can block. He's got to improve. He's got to sustain better. But to me, he's a second round draft pick. I've got him ranked as the third overall running back in this entire draft class. 
and, and nobody questions his legs and his running ability. It's all about the intangibles, and uh, so certainly something he's improved on. James Blackman is back at quarterback for Florida State. Finds Keyshawn Helton for a gain of seven on the play. And I thought it was interesting talking with Tony Elliott, uh, he, which he mentioned. He just he, just, he always trusts his legs, but he needs to trust his upper body more. He, he wasn't real strong coming in uh, to Clemson. He's gotten stronger, and that's critical in pass play. Kalen Laburn gets his first carry. James Skalski. It's a gain of two. It's going to be a third down and one. Molly can add to Travis Etienne. Yeah, after a Clemson touchdown, Dabo Sweeney walked past all his other players, went up to Travis Etienne, gave him a huge hug, and said, way to make a comeback. This has been a great start for you. So Etienne responding, and it's not going unnoticed. On third down and one, barely getting back to the line of scrimmage is Laburn. Jordan Williams comes up to make the tackle. Fourth down. And Florida State now has changed quarterbacks. Ron from Blackman to Hornybrook. Hornybrook throws an interception back to Blackman. They're disjointed. They have no rhythm on the offensive side. They're having a tough time blocking this Clemson front. And the play calling of Kendall Bryles hasn't helped them. And if they're not careful, they get blown out of this football game in the first half. Tommy Martin is on to punt. Get it away. Darian Kendrick will call for the fair catch. Clemson has more touchdowns than Florida State has first downs. The 40, Leroy Butler to the 50, Leroy Butler to the 40, the 30, Leroy Butler to the 20, Leroy to the 10, Leroy Butler knocked out of bounds at the four yard line. What a play by the Seminole Supreme. The famous uh, punt Ruski call by the legendary Gene Deckerhoff. The longtime voice of Florida State football and basketball and Tampa Bay Buccaneers NFL football calling his 501st FSU game here today. And one of the nicest guys in the business. Here's Dixon cutting it back. MJ Dixon able to get to 16 yards. Now we should point out that was on tape. Uh, Gene is long gone. Maybe not the worst thing considering the way it's gone for Florida State. We mentioned the double duty. Gene gets credit for today's broadcast. His 501st for Florida State. Uh, he is headed for the airport. He will be on a jet plane. The Buccaneers are playing in London tomorrow. In Tottenham. That's a 9.30 Eastern time morning kick. So Gene came for a quarter of football. Way to Got put the him, start. Way to put him on blast. Uh, good job. Here. Hey, all about transparency here. There's Turtle Lawrence. been accurate in this football game that's a tight window to Nagata who is a budding star he's the next one in the line a true freshman he's got the size of six four Lawrence will flip it to Dixon wrestled out by Emmett Rice where Nagata stands out Greece is, is where he's from he's from Folsom California he's the first California player for Clemson since Bobby Forbes in 1991 and the coaches kind of said that the, he recruited us. wasn't the other way around. Well, it's become kind of wide receiver U, right? You got DBU, you got running back U, and you got wide receiver U. And Clemson has been kind of where all these guys really want to go. And why wouldn't you? Call Alabama first. How unfair is that? Clemson's going to recruit California too. <laughs> that seems unfair to the other people. Across the middle, cut. Amari Rogers, 24, and Lawrence is in a roll, rhythm roll. You get him the time, watch his eyes. Go from one side of the field, he checks one receiver, comes right off right there, finds Rodgers over the middle of the field, and Rodgers with a miraculous recovery off that ACL in the spring. You see that a brace on his right knee? But for him to be playing now is really amazing. 166 days after it happened, Rodgers was back, and Trevor Lawrence carrying the football. 
And it's an important position what Amari, Amari Rogers plays in that slot, right? He's the one responsible for taking over for Hunter Renfro, who was honored before the game here with the Burlesworth Trophy. Uh, they give to the walk-on of the year in college football. A very, very difficult guy to replace, but Rogers will line up in the slot. He's got man-to-man -man here if Lawrence wants him. Second and three. Darian Rencher has checked in. One clap. Barnes for throw. Zips one in there. It is caught. Justin Ross. Another touchdown for the Tigers. Trevor Lawrence again going through his progressions. This is a double slant. Amari Rogers runs the inside slant right here. He's not there. Watch Trevor Lawrence to go from inside slant, not there to outside slant. That's exactly how you read that route and well executed from Trevor Lawrence. Extra point on the way, and it is good. So you say we can put the panic meter away then, right? He said that in the open. No need for the panic. Yeah, Todd, Todd very astutely, you know, said uh, Alabama has something to say about that wide receiver you, and he's right. I think Alabama has the best set of wide receivers, but I do think that Clemson over the last five, six, seven years, going all the way back to Mike Wallace and others, New Hopkins, they have had consistently better wide receivers in the last, you know, seven or eight years in Alabama. And Justin Ross, though, is the guy that got out of the state of Alabama. A significant recruiting win. Isaiah Simmons, he, he's back. I think everybody talks about the front four for Brent Venables that are gone. But I really think, I believe, one of the biggest pieces that they lost off that team was Kendall Joseph, the Mike linebacker, who was just an unbelievable football player and, and somebody that's not going to be easy to replace. Skalski is, has played a bunch, and he's taken over First that charge, role. First charge, timeout. Nobody really talks about Joseph. Florida State. Florida State spends a timeout. Instead of a delay, a game penalty. Trailing by 28. Hold the T from him, Levy. <laughs> and he still nailed it. Todd, where's he, where's he on your big board? Chase Edmonds is, I'm, I'm now scouting him a little bit. <laughs> he missed the, the chest bump with his buddy. He went straight for the tank. He's a thousand bucks richer. Good on him. Deep shot. It's Terry, and he can't bring it down. Terry and Kendrick have the coverage. A throw from James Blackman. Well, that, that ball a little bit underthrown. If it's further out for Terry, he can run underneath it. He had to fight back to it, and nice job by Kendrick getting her arm in. Molly, what about Blackman in there? Well, Blackman's the emotional leader of the team. He was yelling encouragement at his teammates, and he was saying to Cam Makers, next drive, you need to fight back and make a statement. I'm looking at you to make it right, and Corey Brook was warming up, but Kendall Brown saw Blackman yelling and told him to go on in. And Akers fighting there. It's a loss of five on the play. Tyler Davis brought him down. So you get that fiery speech from your quarterback, and it's a five-yard loss. Yeah, and there's fiery speech. I, I mean, I like the, the passion. I know Willie Taggart likes the passion from James Blackman, but you know, he's not the issue. The issue is the offensive line. You want Cam Akers to make it right? Yeah, try running behind this, this line. And the loss exposes the offensive line even further. Now on third and 15, they're really stressed. And Blackman under pressure. He'll just throw that one away. Fourth down. Xavier Thomas was coming. Well, Florida State has made some strides, but they haven't made strides up front. This is a proud program. They ran the ACC conference for a long time. And if they're going to get back to competing with the Clemsons of the world, it has to start on the offensive line. Until that gets corrected, until Willie Taggart and this, this coaching staff begins to recruit guys that can play up front, it doesn't matter what talent, how many cam makers you have in the program, they won't be able to compete. Fourth punt from Tommy Martin. It's a short one, but it does take a Florida State bounce. Picked up by Darian Kendrick. And he runs out at the 45. 1979 is a significant year and, and could provide a clue. We'll get back to that shortly. I spent three seasons with Gene Deckeroff for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Got to know him real well. Just he does everything right. 
and respects the game and it's a real joy to listen to. Called a lot of greasy touchdowns. <laughs> a few. Cornell Powell pick up a feed on the play. And already Clemson is uh, spreading the wealth. And why, and why not? They played 111 players against Charlotte. They're not going to take their foot off the gas pedal. Certainly not. This is a rivalry game in the ACC. Yeah, Florida State's down, but this is a traditional rival, and they will not take their foot off the gas pedal. Etienne is still in there. And he'll get five on the play. And why would they? I mean, Dabo Sweeney, right? Everybody's saying, listen. I don't know if Clemson can afford to lose a game this season and still make the college football playoff. It's a, I think it's different than years past. And so Dabo needs style points. And in the ACC, which we know is down, every game matters, and how they win games matter. Uh, so I think they're going to continue to make a statement. You have to think, if North Carolina scores that two-point conversion, that could have taken Clemson right out of the mix for good this season. Here's Lawrence under some pressure. Able to escape and throw, and it's intercepted. The first thing to go the way of the Seminoles, Hamza Nasruddin on the interception. A poor decision from Trevor Lawrence. Throw the football away. You know, throw it way out of bounds. Nasruddin, you see that left foot goes out of bounds. He has to reestablish himself in bounds, which he does with two feet. Did he control that ball to the ground? <laughs> he certainly got the feet in. There's the one toe. Now, does he control this ball to the ground? The ball hits the ground, which it can do as long as he can maintain his control. I think that's a good play by Nazel Dean. And a poor decision from Lawrence. Did Lawrence step out of bounds? No, he didn't. He stayed in bounds. Wow. Nazel Dean is the leading tackler for Florida State. Last year and this year. Alex Hornibrook is in there. Completes to Trayshawn Harrison. And Florida State looks for some kind of spark here. And that's the, the sixth interception on the season for Trevor Lawrence. You know, he threw four all of last year. And in this season, he threw five through three games. You just got to eliminate. There's no reason for that, uh, that risk. Harrison, the ball carrier. And James Skalski comes up to make the stop. They're so short in the backfield with Akers and Labor. They go to Treshawn Harrison, the wide receiver. It's a loss on the play. Yeah, this, I mean, it's, it's smoke and mirrors for Florida State offensively. Our, our Browns knows that he cannot run between the tackles, so he tries to run on the perimeter right into the arms of their best defensive player in Isaiah Sink. Here's Horny Brook on third and 18. Isaiah Simmons, another play for him. Considered the best player on the field on that Clemson defense. He makes another play there. Just watch the speed for number 11. He's tracking the quarterback. He's on the opposite side. And watch this closing. I mean, a former safety, you expect that kind of speed. But at 6'4", 230 pounds, that's what makes him special. Shows exactly why he's going to be a top 10, top 15 pick in this upcoming draft if he comes out early. Guys that can cover like that, can rush the quarterback and can play the run sideline and the sideline. You just don't find many athletes like Isaiah Simmons. Martin's fifth punt. Kendrick, the fair catch up to the 45. We asked you a couple moments ago our athletic trivia question. Gene Deckerhoff, one of three finalists for the Florida State football radio job in 1979. Who were the other two finalists? The answer a couple of legends in the business, Tom Mees. And Craig Sager, both gone far too so soon for all of us. Uh, Tommy's is beloved, beloved in the ESPN community. And Craig Sager, nationally, two outstanding names. But you know, if you got to finish, you know, behind <laughs> those, what a, what a group of three right. to get that one those, job. Those three guys, I mean, that, they they have all been at the pinnacle of their professions. to midfield now. Gain of six on the play. Lynn J. Dixon, the ball carrier there. In 1979, I reference that was the first year of ESPN. Oh, okay. So Tom Mees probably doesn't get the Florida State job. To say, I'll go to Bristol. Well, it was the ESPN. Right. Craig Savory was the NBA. Right. Gene's had of the career that he's had. I mean, right. it's... 
That's a great trio. Professionally speaking, no question. Dumping it off to J.C. Chalk. The tight end picks up eight on the play. We wind under five left in this first half. J.C. Chalk is, is an interesting piece in this offense. Right? They've had some good tight ends in, in the past. No more Milan Richard. And it was interesting watching the North Carolina tape from two weeks ago. In crunch time situations, when they used to go to Hunter Renfro in the slot, they went to J.C. Chalk. It wasn't Amari Rodgers, and he got a huge first down late in that football game. Lawrence throwing and completing. That is Amari Rodgers. He wrestled out of bounds by Nazrul Dean. Chalk's got some famous bloodlines too, Greece. His grandfather, Gene Stallings, Coach Dabo at Alabama. Wow. Well, he's he's got an opportunity. You know, he's uh, he's not going to be Hunter Renfro. You're not going to find one of those guys. Uh, but he's got an opportunity to, to be that move tight end, to block in the run game, to be on the end of line of scrimmage, as you see him here now, where he can run past pa uh, patterns and also block. Here's Lawrence. With a clean pocket, runs to the right, throws to his left. Mario Rogers bouncing off some people. And it looks like an assistant for Florida State went down. Take a check of the sideline for the Seminoles. 28-0 in the first half of this football game with an opportunity here coming under three and a half minutes for Clemson to tack on some more points. And they're they're running misdirection throwbacks. They're not just lining up and pounding Florida State. I will point out the Florida State gets the ball to begin the second half, though. Thanks. Lawrence taking a shot, and why not? Sailed it over the head of Ngata. Stanford Samuels. Have the coverage there. First downs in the game so far. Florida State's got two of them. Clemson has 17. Oof. I, it's interesting, too, to see Trevor Lawrence is running. He's taking hits. They, you know, they're going to keep drilling it into Florida State as, as long as they can, especially through the third quarter. They, they don't care. They've got to get right off on the offensive side. They've got to get Trevor going. That's exactly what's happening today. Draw play. ETA. put up the space on the inside and Travis Etienne that's where he will eat you alive ever since he had that 200 yard rushing game against Georgia Tech teams have been focused on him defenses have been focused on him but that's what makes this offense unique it's, the it's Etienne again his 13th carry of the afternoon will give him 89 yards for the game. And you mentioned the Georgia Tech game, Greeson. So he had the, the off game, with well, a bad game even in their last action a couple weeks ago. Really has not had a great season. The opening game was great, but people have been questioning what's going on with ETN ever since that opener against Georgia Tech. And the last game was just was the worst of the of the season so far. But he has bounced back and among the biggest plays was picking up the blitz that lead to, led to a touchdown pass. Justin Ross trying to haul that one in. Well, they had the matchup they wanted. Justin Ross on the true freshman for Florida State, Bernardo Green. Green gets his hand on the outside shoulder pad. The official does not call it. Green does not look back for the football. Normally, when they don't look back, they will throw the flag if there is some contact, but Green got away with it. Harlan Barnett, the defensive coordinator of Florida State, said he would be speaking rather nicely to the officials. <laughs> Tell them to cut us a break pregame, so maybe they got the benefit of it out there. <laughs> Ninth play of the drive upcoming. The Devils going to call a timeout. They were under 10 on the play clock. Third down. That's a good timeout from Dabo. See, Lawrence isn't happy about it either. No two-minute warning, but you check in here. After the previous 11 at Michigan State. It's Lawrence, the ball carrier, down to the two. Leonard Warner makes the stop. And they, they, this crowd wants to go for it. Fourth and goal home. They understand. 28-0. Chance to go up 35-0 in the first half. And they're going to bring in the beef. They're bringing in Davis and Pinkney. Pinkney, right, who's playing that Dexter Lawrence role in the fullback position. And they're going to pound this ball. They got Logan Rudolph in there as well. That's Mason's kid brother. 
This is where Christian Wilkins made, uh, made his money catching the football, too. This is another reason why kids want to come to Clemson, especially defensive players. Here's Amari Rodgers off the pitch. And the ball comes out of the one. And recovered by Florida State, Robert Cooper knocked it free. And Warner able to jump on the ball. I think that was Xavier Thomas. There's two number threes. That's Xavier Thomas, the defensive end, who's a great athlete. They pitch him the ball. Pinckney is the lead back. And Xavier Thomas, who doesn't carry the ball very often, fumbles it, wasn't going to get in anyway, and a great stop by Florida State defensive. Thomas, a former Wildcat quarterback in high school. Maybe Clemson got a little too cute there, Greece. Had a little too much going on. And a great hit by Akeem Dent, a true freshman, right on the football. Now, listen, you're up 28 nothing, and you've got a lot of guys on defense. They started a tradition of getting them involved in short yardage. Why not? You know, have some fun. Get out there, give them the ball. Maybe next time you keep the back in and you bring the lineman in the block, they'll let him carry it. So the last two Clemson possessions, an interception and a fumble. Here's James Blackman from his own end zone. Threw it up high. And Trayshawn Harrison able to bring it down. Good job hanging in there by Blackman. I'm standing about 15 yards away from him, five yards away from him when he threw that ball. He is so skinny. He's put on 30 pounds, and he's still so lean. He takes so many hits behind this line. I think he'd prefer you call him wiry. Okay, wiry. <laughs> Trayshawn Harrison <laughs> gained a five on the play. They need some chunk yards here. With 48 seconds left, Florida State does have two timeouts. Like to at least get on the scoreboard any way they can. Even a field goal would look better than a goose egg. That's their first first down. It's a 20 minute. Ball is tipped and deflected. Intercepted by Chad Smith. And just like that, they give it back. Jordan Williams got a hand on the ball. And Chad Smith able to pick it off. We trade turnovers in the final 40 seconds. Yeah, give Jordan Williams that, that interception. The, the sophomore, 6'4", 310 pounds. He has been an outstanding find for Clemson with all of the... Here he is right here with all of the guys that have left this program. You're going to have to learn some of these new names, and Jordan Williams has been consistent. He gets a hand up, forces that interception. And Blackman saw Trayshawn Harrison. I was standing right behind him. You could see the passing window that he had. He thought he had an opportunity to throw the ball down the seam, and then the, the batted ball. I mean, it's just nothing's going right for Florida State right now. Including somebody down on the ground for Florida State. It's Keyshawn Helton. That's the receiver, sophomore. You know, when you have these interceptions, and then you got you know guys running balls back. You know, you lose the spatial awareness, and guys are getting crack blocked. That's why the rules now are a little bit stronger on the crackback blocks. They become defenseless players. You can't hit them. There's no more blindside blocks. Uh, and this is you, you're trying to eliminate some of these kind of injuries on change of possession plays. And hopefully, Keyshawn Helton's all right. Helton was one of the bright spots in Florida State's loss last year to Clemson. He had a 70-yard touchdown against the Tigers, and that came in at 59 to 10 loss. See Blackman come flying in there, knocking out his the nephew of FSU alum and NFL Hall of Famer Derek Brooks. His teammates come over to pay their respects. Don't want to speculate on the injury there. Well, when we talked to Kendall Bryles last night and asked him. Now, who kind of jumps out as a leader on this offense? Who can you rally around? The first, without hesitation, the first player's name out of his mouth was Keyshawn Held. How consistent and unselfish yes. of a player that he is. She's got the hand raised in the air. Letting people and family and friends back home. In Pensacola, Florida, he's, he's doing okay. See, we get a report on him. There's 40 seconds left in the half. And, Hard to imagine a, a worse first half for these Seminoles. Yeah. Well, they had they had a lot of momentum coming into this this game. Uh, obviously, first back-to-back -back ACC wins under Willie Taggart and a bye week to try to get healthy, and it just hasn't translated to the first half of this one. Lawrence 
Clemson still throwing to the end zone. And Overton could not haul it in. As if it complete. Stay tuned for the State Farm Halftime Report. Kevin Nagandi, Jonathan Vilma, Mark Sanchez standing by in the studio. We'll get you caught up today. Date on everything going on around college football. A spectacular Saturday around the nation. Here's Lawrence to throw. Looking for Rodgers, sailed it by him. 31 ticks left, and third down upcoming. Back-to-back -back throws that uh, Trevor Lawrence was just a little bit off. This time he's trying to fit this ball into Amari Rodgers. You see the play fake, and right now he releases it, and here's Rodgers right here. That ball has to come this direction, and it's got to be low, and it's just high. It just sails on him a little bit. He's got such a live arm, Steve. Like, he's got so much power. He generates so much power that sometimes he's got to dial it back and not throw the fastball, but try to be the winner. Third and ten. Justin Ross, fourth down upcoming. Sante Samuel on the coverage, gain of eight on the play. Well, Dabo went for on fourth down with the defensive line coming in. I don't imagine he's going to bring that defensive line in again. He's going to keep the uh, the offense out there and go for it. And this is all about attitude. This is all about, you know, his communication to his players. And listen, I trust you. I trust in these situations that you're going to execute what we have talked about during the course of the week. And yeah, it's 28 nothing, right? I get that, but this is more about Dabo communicating to his players. Clemson had two timeouts left. They want to take a look. Now have one remaining. 26 seconds left in the half. Kick off your NFL Sunday with the countdown crew. Tomorrow, before they square off, quarterback to quarterback, mano to mano, Russell Wilson and Baker Mayfield sit down and talk it out. Plus, Peyton Manning goes 101 with Brett Favre. And then, on Monday night, should be a beauty. NFC North battle. Matthew Stafford leads the Lions to Lambeau. They'll take on Aaron Rodgers Whoa. and the Packers. Restore the roar. Would the it Lions. Would it surprise you if I said the Lions have beaten the Packers four consecutive times? Uh, yeah, it right? would. That's Absolutely. Surprising. Absolutely. But, I mean, they've beaten the Chargers this year. They took the Chiefs to the end, right? The, the, the Lions are uh, somebody to watch out for in the Norris. Matt Patricia, the Norris, look at you. <laughs> Matt Patricia has the Lions. Yeah. They opened up with that ugly tie, you remember, to start the season. Since then, they've been good. So they're not going to go on fourth and two. Took the timeout, thought about it. And P.T. Potter will come on to attempt a 20 four-yard field goal. I think Dabo said, I'm, I'm not going to go for it. I need to get my kicker some reps here, too. <laughs> All the way. Those reps were a good idea. Yeah. Missed it to the right. Look at Clip. Hey, yeah. Dabo's had a rough week. This is... Dabo doesn't have too many bad weeks. Dabo's had a rough week, and even up 28 to nothing. He's going to let people hear about it. He's, he's trying to get the entire team ready. He knows what's down the road. Right. He knows what this team is capable of, and you can't get where you want to go without a kicker, a reliable kicker, and right now he's not sold on B.T. Potter. He just said Potter packing, gave him the motion, and Potter started walking yeah. away. He's still yelling. He's still hot about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, you got to be, you got, if you're going to do this to the kicker in front of the entire Stadium and an entire country watching this, right? You, you got to be sure that you got somebody else you can rely on because the psyche of Potter is going to be in the tank. Steven Sawicki is the backup kicker. He's a fifth year senior. I also think that Dabo realizes he's not going to need a field goal late in this game to win. So he's not so concerned about the confidence of his kicker today. Guess he can work on it during the week. Well, Labor has the first down you know, no time with no time left. It's not like it's the first time he's had a Greg Heigl right last year was 14 and 19 and they won a national championship. So he's got to figure this out. Tough to imagine this one going worse for Florida State. It's all Clemson the State Farm halftime report. Yes. And that confidence beaten down in the first half. Second rank Clemson with a 28 
to nothing lead. Welcome you back inside the broadcast booth. Steve Levy along with Brian Greasy and Tony Elliott, the offensive coordinator for Clemson, said after the one-point win against North Carolina, met with the kids on Monday morning and said, do we have your attention now? They clearly have their attention, and you saw that in the first half. You know, a lot of focus both on the offensive and defensive sides. You know, we talked about offensively, what's wrong? Can they get Travis Etienne going? He's been going. Trevor Lawrence been just fine, healthy. And then on the defensive side, they continue to play consistently under Red Venables, only four first downs for Florida State offensively. Kick out of the end zone, touchback. Just as we went to halftime, Molly talked with Dabo. Coach, you were very frustrated with that missed field goal. What's your message to Potter at the half? <laughs> I don't know if I can say that right now. Uh, that's ridiculous. It's a layup. I mean, it's just disappointing. He wasn't ready. Mine wasn't in what he was doing, but I'm disappointed with the last drive. You know, we should have we should have came away with points on one of those last two drives. But hey, we've had a great half, really a great half. Proud of our guys; they were ready to play. Great energy, great focus. Created a couple turnovers, some big plays. Offensively, they really played well. Uh, you know, Trevor just lost his mind for a second there. Kid made a great play, but he should have just thrown it away. Let's punt the ball. But it's disappointing we didn't come away with points right there. Uh, so next time I'll go for it. Thank you, Coach. That was Potter's fourth miss of nine attempted field goals. I thought this was cool. Right after halftime, he came out. Obviously, he was upset, and uh, but he talked him up at the midfield. Can't beat these guys up right all the time. And in the moment, right, you're gonna you're gonna do what you need to do as a coach on the sideline. And then when you come out, Dabo Sweeney, one of the best in the business, if not the best, from a psychology standpoint, to build Potter back up. Again, not necessarily for today, but you're going to need him oh, yeah. down the road. You're going to need someone. <laughs> Find yourself in another one-point game. On third down and one, Blackman lofts one. It is tipped and knocked away. Cam Akers could not haul it in. Blackman had him wide open. Could have been a big play. And this is a byproduct of Blackman not feeling like he's got the protection. He has to run outside. He can't set his feet. He's got to throw these balls on the move. And when you're running to your right trying to throw a fade to a wide open receiver, naturally the ball is going to fade to the outside. Product of, of Florida State, right? They they dial up the perfect play. They get the rubber out. Their best player, Cam Akers, open, and they can't complete. Punt number six of the afternoon for Tommy Martin. Fair catch. Take a look at today's Pacific Life game summary. Well, it's been all the Clemson Tigers and Trevor Lawrence. This is the first drive, right? Taking a shot from the very first play down the field to T. Higgins. See, nice job of throwing this ball out in front, letting him go up and make a play, and then going through his progressions. Inside slant to the outside slant. That's exactly how you're supposed to do it, inside the five-yard line. And Trevor Lawrence, for everything everybody's been talking about, yeah, he's human, right? He's gonna make some mistakes. He's gonna throw some interceptions. He did that in the first half, too, but there's nothing wrong with him. Travis Etienne. Beyond the 40 gain of eight. That was actually one of the headlines this week. Coach says that Lawrence is human. Yeah. <laughs> we forget that. And so Dabo got a call or text message midweek from a member of the media saying, What's up with Lawrence's shoulder? Did he have an MRI? And and that really got Dabo, got him hot. He said, Look, we give MRIs all the time, right? Yeah. It got, guys get MRIs all the time. We're not going to announce with every single player gets an MRI, but there is no drama here at Clemson, and Dabo has accused some members of the media trying to stir things up a little bit. Yeah, and I, you know, I don't, I probably didn't appreciate the text message either, you know, on off week, but but I think one one thing he would admit, and, and what Tony Elliott did admit when we met with him, is that, and what Trevor Lawrence admitted, is he hasn't been himself. He hasn't played as good as he did a year ago. He's kind of thought too much, tried to do too much. Uh, he just needs to trust the offense, and that's what he's done in this game. Trust the, the playmakers around him. Third down and one. ETN runs through a lot of bodies in a second effort. as just enough. And that'll keep the drive alive. Well, Florida State is going to get a little bit of help back in this second half of Janaris Robinson. We saw him in the first half sitting in the tunnel watching his iPad, and now he finally gets a chance to come out and hit somebody.
good look into the eyes of Trevor Lawrence. It's ETN staying on his feet, bouncing off people, keep on running, run out. Travis ETN now stumbles down inside the 30 after a gain of 27. Great block by the center, Sean Pollard. He's just going to pull around here to the outside. Now, they've had some great centers, some great players, Jay Guillermo, Justin Falsinelli, and Sean Pollard has moved from the tackle position. He's played both tackles, right and left, during his career, and a critical component of this Clemson offense is moving him to center from guard a year ago, and he's been up to the task. A very smart football player. ETN over 3,000 yards rushing for his career. Here's Amari Rogers. Amari Rogers to the end zone. Touchdown. Amari Rogers untouched. 29 yards for six. And this is starting to look very similar to last year's meeting in Tallahassee. Clemson beat Florida State 59 to 10. They had a 45 nothing lead a year ago. Wound up being the worst home loss in the Seminoles' proud program history, tying for the worst loss ever, regardless of the location. ESPN.com slash Taco Bell. See how your school can compete or get the community's attention by using the hashtag LiveMoss student section contest. BT Potter kicks it away for Clemson. But we should point out it was not Potter who kicked the extra point on uh, the last touchdown for Clemson. Steven Sawicki is the fifth-year senior from Fayetteville, North Carolina. <laughs> He's got some moves. And he had a couple of extra points earlier in the season. That's his third. So He's three for three on extra points. Maybe Dabble's making a statement there. Yeah, well, he's making a statement, surely, but uh, I don't know that it's going to be a permanent move. But Potter, you know, he missed not only today, but he missed a 33-yarder against Syracuse, a 40-yarder two weeks ago against Carolina. So uh, this is something that he's going to have to figure out. Ball start. Offense number 51. Five-yard penalty. First down. He may, he may go the old uh, put the signs out on campus, have a tryout for kickers. Seen that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because we had a contest winner. Yeah, the All-State winner. He, he made it from about the same distance. He was a team <laughs> for a thousand bucks. Here's my concern for Florida State. You do not want to undo everything good that you had done the last three weeks. The two victories, the bye week, they came with a little swagger, a little edge. You can lose here and still hold your head up high, still have confidence, still feel good about where your program is headed, but not the way this is going at 35 to nothing. I mean, Willie Taggart, he, he stepped into a difficult spot. He said the first job I had when I took the job was to stop the downward spiral. He said Florida State has never been in this position. No one knew how to handle it. So, so he really did do that part. He stopped the downward spiral. And now it's now we're trying to turn it upward. Again, they had the two victories, back-to-back -back wins in the conference against Louisville and NC State. And had the guys believing and feeling good about themselves. And then you run into number two, the defending national yeah, champs. I, I, I think he was disappointed the way last year went. I don't think he thought that that four of a year was, was in his future. You know, I think, you know, the last three years, they're 15 and 15, and they're 8 and 11 in the ACC. So it, it's not like this is uh, a new thing for Florida State, but you're right. They have not been in the situation. Blackman was hit as he throws, and it's up for grabs. Intercepted by Nolan Turner. There is a flag down as Turner is tripped up along the Florida sideline. And a bunch more flags come into play now. But Turner has the pick. We'll see if it stands. Yeah, this is the same story for Florida State. They can't protect the quarterback, but you have a quarterback in Blackman who wants to make a play, wants to make something happen. He's got the high energy, wants to take a shot, and all that together kind of ends up being an interception. We've seen this throughout Blackman's career. First game he played against Alabama, we saw the same kind of plays, and it's frustrating if you're Kendall Bryles because you just don't have the pieces 
uh, up front to really you know, put an offense together. And smoke and mirrors eventually is going to be busted open by a defensive front against this offensive line. Up next on Florida State schedule, by the way, is, is Wake Forest. I don't, I don't think they've lost yet, by the way. Undefeated. 5-0. <laughs> yep. oh. yeah. Dave Clawson's a heck of a football coach. There are two fouls on the play. Holding defense. The illegal block in the back against the offense. Ten yard penalty. First down. There were a lot of hankies, a lot of dirty laundry on the field. Those were the two penalties they chose. Decline. The holding will be enforced. Ten yards from the previous spot. First down. They're going to call holding on Clemson, and that's the one that's going to be accepted. Wipes out Florida the State. interception. They didn't give us the, the number on who they called it on, and Dabble Sweeney'd like to know who they called it on as well. We're with you, Coach. Just give us a number. Nolan Turner's a really good story for Clemson. Lost his dad to ALS. His dad, Kevin, played with Dabo at Alabama, then seven years in the NFL with both the Patriots and the Eagles. Got an opportunity here to come to Clemson and play for Coach Sweeney. Three to snap it. Crowd getting loud. Gonna run up the middle. I've not seen any of this from him. Did not want the contact, and Isaiah Simmons lets him know about it. And that will likely be what the flag is for. I think it might be on Blackman, actually. Yep. Always the second guy, right? Well, Blackman ran away from Simmons. Simmons had something to say to him. It looked like some taunting, no? Blackman didn't like it, so Blackman got up and shoved him. And I think they're going to call this on black. There are two fouls on the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the defense number 11. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the offense number one. Those penalties offset. Results of the play is second down. This is their first unsportsmanlike for both players. You get two, you get ejected. Like in Oklahoma, Texas today, everybody got an unsportsmanlike before the game started. Doesn't like it, but with the crowd doesn't know it. See that official right there, the side judge can hear exactly what Isaiah Simmons was saying to Blackman. You're up 28, 35, nothing. You know, you don't need to be chirping, right? Like, just let your play on the field do it. You can understand Florida State's frustration. Here's Cam Akers. Simmons makes the stop. He remains focused. Gate of four on the play. I'll tell you the guy, the guy I feel bad for is Cam Akers. Yeah. You know, Cam Akers coming into this game at 115 carries. And uh, you can see that every single carry that Akers has, there's one, at least one on block defensive player. He's taken a lot of hits, but he has been a program guy 100%. A lot of respect for the way he plays the game. Blitz coming. are discussing. Well, James Blackman was over on the sideline and he pushes Isaiah Simmons, comes back out, and throws an interception. It's a touchdown. I don't think he should have been out there. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct gets the return team, number 12. That penalty of four the succeeding kickoff. This is number 12's first on Sportsman Like Conduct foul. That's Kayvon Wallace. 
Blackman is he, he is too up and down. It's a roller coaster with him, and I get it. He's not getting a whole lot of support, but he's been in, inaccurate with the football. And in that situation, I think this is why Courtney Brook has been playing more for Florida State. But this is he had a wide open receiver in Cam Akers and just misses him. And Kayvon Wallace. Not only did he give the unsportsmanlike, but he came and hit Cam Akers low in the knee when he couldn't see him, which I don't like either. Just saw Wiki on for another extra point out of the hold of Will Sweet. And this has gotten away from Florida State in a hurry. Clemson scoring every which way. It happened for Florida State was Clemson winning by just one point at North Carolina two weeks ago. That got everybody's attention. Clemson had their antenna up. And then two weeks to stir over it. Right. And self-scout. Here's Treshawn Harris. Out to the 28-yard line. So TJ's out again this week. Tom Jackson still shaking off that Achilles injury. So Ryan Clark is back, 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 back. Let's see what it did there. Yep. With Boomer on NFL Primetime tomorrow, 7.30 Eastern, only on ESPN+. Plus. Get ESPN+, Plus. download the app, or go to ESPNplus.com. to find out what kind of mood Ryan Clark is going to be in after Florida LSU tonight right. on ESPN. Installment of Daniel yes, Jones. Yes, the Daniel Jones update. Todd McShay, how are we feeling now? Well, I, I just, you know, I just like facts. I'm a fact <laughs> guy. Really? I like to, I like to look at the numbers the last couple weeks. I don't know. You tell me, Grease. What, what do you think? So, for you, Todd did say, I think it was either six or eight weeks. Come talk to him in six or eight. Yeah, weeks. we'll talk in week eight. Yeah, week eight. So, you know, trending. We trended up. Now we're going a little time out. Shaky. Florida State. Their first. Thirty seconds. So Florida State spending a, a timeout there. Oh, how about this guy, Kyle Allen? He's, yeah. Now he's, what do you think of him, Todd? I, I, I don't know. How'd that get in there? I have no idea. Yeah, wow. I mean, you you guys have been burying me for a, a month now on Daniel Jones. So I just want to mention, you know, there, uh, there's some other guys. <laughs> Undrafted <laughs> quarterbacks like Kyle Allen. Get out of my face, Bert. <laughs> <laughs> so we're quoting McShay. With McShay, I got you. I have no idea how it that's, got there. That's, is that the third person? No, it's just it's just me kind of needling you back a little. That's just giving be, it yeah, back. Todd's going to start you know, referring to himself. Very third fair. Person. Sort of like Reggie, Watch Reggie it, Jackson. <laughs> uh, Todd's got a tough job. You know, Bobby's got a tough one. Fumble. Acres coughed it up. And let's see if Clemson has it. Isaiah Simmons. Who's done everything for that Tigers defense today? Denzel Johnson knocked it away. And we think Simmons is on top of that ball underneath the pile. Cam Akers finally gets a little bit of running room and he gets into the secondary. And Denzel Johnson comes up and puts a helmet right on the football. And forces the third turnover this ball game. Cam Akers almost didn't know what to do with himself. He had so much room for the first time. And nice job by Johnson. Now this secondary is probably the most senior part of the defense and the safety position in particular. Brett Venables feels really good about the experience that he has between Tanner Muse and Kayvon Wallace as the starters and Nolan Turner and Denzel Johnson as the backups. Trevor Lawrence might take the rest of the afternoon off. Say hi to Chase Bryce. When Jay Dixon coughs it up and Florida State recovers, Dennis Briggs for the Seminoles. So for the second time this afternoon, the team's trade turnovers were within a play or two. ETN put it on the ground last week, and that made Dabo's skin crawl. And now Lynn J. Dixon back up. We continue Dr. Pepper's championship drive. Game of the week. Labor to Florida State. The last three plays, that, actually that last handoff was a welcome play because the prior three plays have all been turnovers. 
Florida State has this is their fourth possession of the second half already. That's amazing. And back to Alex Hornibrook, and I, I don't. I think we've seen the last of James Blackman. He's, he's too uh, erratic at this point to go back in this football game. Hey, good protection. And Hornibrook still will throw. Down to Molly. Well, Steve, a little injury update for Florida State. Their safety, Cyrus Fagan, is in street clothes on the sideline. He has a boot on his left leg, and he couldn't put weight on it in the first half. And also, Willie Taggart at halftime told me he didn't know if wide receiver Keyshawn Helton would return, but he is not here on the sideline, Steve. All right, Molly, thank you. It's a tough day for Willie Taggart. Tough day for them in this Florida State program. I don't think they come in here expecting to win, but you, you can have a good showing. You can hang in with the number two team in the country, and that's just simply not the case. Forty Brooks sailed that one over Treshawn Harrison, and it brings up a fourth down. Well, uh, it matters when you're trying to rebuild a program like Will Willie Taggart is. It matters how you lose. Uh, you're going to lose some games, but it does matter. It, there's been nothing positive to come out of this football game for Florida State. They've been disjointed on offense, haven't found any kind of rhythm. And this is not the Clemson defense of last year. It's a right. good Clemson defense, but it's not the smothering defense that it was a year ago. Uh, and then defensively, they have been outmatched. And you know, Harlan Barnett uh, tried to change the style of defense they played in the second game into the year. And and uh, certainly brought in Jim Levitt, but it is not gelled. And so they they have got to find some answers, and they've got to do it quickly. Make sure you kick off your NFL Sunday tomorrow with the Countdown crew. Russell Wilson and Baker Mayfield sit down and talk with each other. Plus, how Patrick Mahomes' hairstyle has taken KC by storm. <laughs> Maybe you should try that, Grease. <laughs> Go in that direction. Then Monday night, Matthew Stafford, the Lions, take on Aaron Rodgers, the Packers, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, the ESPN app. Fun to watch the Matt LaFleur, Aaron Rodgers relationship in Green Bay. Awesome. Indeed. Chaz Malusi, his first carry of the game, and he gets one yard. A Chez, I beg your pardon. Chez Malusi, a fresh, true freshman from Naples, Florida. This is his 14th rush attempt of the season. It's good to see Chase Price get some, some reps. He comes into this game. You know, he's thrown two, two touchdowns and some mop-up duty, but you know, people remember, especially the Clemson faithful, remember last year how important he was in that Syracuse game to keep Clemson's undefeated and national championship season uh, intact. So he is beloved here in Death Valley. Rice completes to Cornell Powell. That was the game at Syracuse. The 94-yard drive to overcome a fourth-quarter deficit. He came in in relief for Trevor Lawrence. That was the same week that Kelly Bryant left the team. Not that Chase Bryce is old enough to have a beer, but he'll never have to pay for one. Wow. He'll, he'll there. always have that, right? That will always be in his back pocket. But he basically saved the season. Yeah. Right, they lose to Syracuse. There is no national championship or playoff. Well, and remember, everybody was saying what a mistake it was for Kelly Bryant to leave the program because Trevor Lawrence gets hurt. He would have been playing in that game. Bryce will take a shot down the field. T.J. Chase, the intended target, the flag comes in. And throw this on Renardo Green, the true freshman corner. Pass interference, defense, number 36. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Not, and I don't like that call, right? The, the corner's in great position. He's he's playing the football. And he's it was not, a bad ball. Yeah, he's not just, like, pulling on the receiver. That's a bad call. I agree with Dabble. Dabble's still coaching him up. Up 42 to nothing. 6.59 left here in the third. to throw trying to go a little back shoulder to Nagata that's incomplete, that's incomplete. and the faithful are growing restless in Tallahassee Greece when yeah. they had their home game again as you would expect against Louisville they had their smallest home crowd in 36 years they still had 42,000 there 
But the capacity of Doak Campbell is 79,000. You see some of the Florida State fans in attendance, but uh, they've had some downtime. And I'll repeat what I said before with, with Taggerton. Florida State's never been in this position before. No one would know how to handle it. Here's Malusi again. He'll bang the turf. He wanted that first down. It's a gain of eight. And it's not a lack of effort. I mean, they, they still have their starters out. These guys are, are fighting and giving everything that they have. They really are. You can just see on the field. But it's a lack of talent. I mean, that's really the issue. You, they, they only had two players drafted last year. Yes, one first-rounder in Brian Burke, but the other one was a six-rounder. Right now, I only have one player on Florida State in the top 150. Just by comparison, they were averaging from 2013 to 2015 almost 10 players drafted a year. So the talent level is not there right now. They're young. They're trying to recruit. But you can see the effort is there. It's just a real struggle to try to keep up with teams like this and it's shocking to see from a Florida State program that has been a powerhouse for so many years and that was Tyson Pumachan the true freshman from Bridgeport Connecticut getting into the action there and it's a fourth and one Todd they also have to develop the talent too right I mean they had the number one recruiting class not too long ago four or five years ago so they have to they have to develop that talent as That's well fair. And some more flags. This is going to go against Florida State. Dabo said this week that Florida State has out-recruited Clemson in five of the last six classes. Define out-recruit. Well, right. that's that's what he's saying. Yeah. Must be some stars involved in those plays. Offside. Again. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Results in a first down. Wow. I mean, we've seen a collapse offense, defense, and now it's special teams for Willie Tiger. But... Uh, He's got, he's got a big a big job ahead of him. This is not going to be a quick turnaround. And the first order of business, as we talked about, talent on the offensive line. Second order of business, they got to find a quarterback. It's not James Blackman. It's not going to be Alex Hornibrook going forward. And so he's got to find a quarterback. Now, he's competing against Florida. He's competing against Miami UCF. It's the same people he's competing against for the talent. But at Florida State, you should be able to get plenty of talent. And then it's up to you to develop Michael Dukes is in the backfield. That's Dukes. He'll get a carry. And back to line. Pushed back by Leonard Warner. We mentioned the fans growing restless. You remember this scene at the game in Tallahassee last year? That's the Florida State professor, Bruce Dyer. He was found reading Jillian Flynn's Dark Places. That's the name of the book. How apropos. Friends, too. He said he took his daughter to the game with her friends. Things were getting out of hand. I was getting cold, so I took my shirt off, got in the sun. <laughs> my daughter and her friends went home and started reading a book. Oh, and uh, he, that went viral, if you will, on the internet. Bryce will take a shot for DeAndre Overton. And we'll check the flag here. And so we're having some fun. Offside. Defense, number 11, five-yard penalty. Well, we're having some fun with the picture and the restless fan base for Florida State. What was serious was the quote after that game from Willie Taggart. He said, first time since I've been here, I felt like we had some guys that quit on our football team. That can't be tolerated. One thing you can't do, you can't quit. You quit, you don't play. And we always hear about this changing of the culture of these programs, right? Seems to have gotten the quitters out of the program late last season into this season. Well, it's just not showing up on the field here today. Where they are clearly overmatched. And Gata's got the first down. Yeah, and you can tell. You, when you try to find where the effort is, you look on the, the fronts, the offensive and defensive lines. And uh, as you watch this Florida State defensive line, there's some reserves in there now. Uh, but they have not stopped rushing the passer. That's where you find it first. Bryce will pitch it. The Dukes. Janaris Robinson. And make the tackle. Well, Robinson should be fresh. Now, he'll play the first half. And he's he's a piece that you can you can build around. I mean, it's, he's a junior. He'll be back next year. You saw Emmett Rice there. He's another junior. Jaleel McRae, I think, is, is a young freshman linebacker with a lot of talent. Uh, you're going to potentially lose some of these guys up front. Marvin Wilson may declare for the draft. But Robert Cooper is a, is a sophomore. And so you're going to get Durden back. There's some pieces to build around defensively. A light gain or two. Taking a shot for Nagata. 
over the shoulder. It'll be interesting to see what happens between you know, Harlan Barnett and, and Jim Leonard. You know, two guys that have been you know, calling defenses for a long time. And you know, Harlan Barnett was at Michigan State for a long time, ran one style of defense, one front, one coverage predominantly. Uh, and now they have changed. And Willie Taggart wants to be more multiple, which is more of what Jim Levitt does well. So it'll be interesting to see kind of what happens with the play calling for Florida State defensively as the season goes on. Third down and 12. That's Dukes in the backfield. Bryce stepping up. And we'll get a couple. Call it four, and it'll bring up fourth down. Levitt was brought in after the Louisiana Monroe game. And Taggart said Louisiana Monroe was taking advantage of our defense. I'm going to repeat that. Can you imagine Louisiana Monroe was taking advantage of the Florida State defense? I can't imagine that phrase ever being uttered, and yet it was. Jim Levitt had already sort of been around the program. There'd been some, I guess, I guess they talked back in May. And then it finally developed, and Levitt was brought on board. Well, you know, Willie felt like Harlan was reverting back to the old style of defense, what he felt comfortable with, and that's not what he wanted to do. Fourth and eight, and Clemson's still going for it. With Chase Price. I don't think they got it. But you know that Dabble wasn't going to attempt a field goal there. No, I guess not. That's <laughs> what he told Molly. That's you in Florida at the other Death Valley, if you will. Horny Brooks in there at quarterback. Nearly a one-handed grab by Terry there. Clemson came in rank number two, and a lot of people said they didn't deserve to even be in the top four. And that, that brought up a lot of conversation. Among them, Dabo saying, don't waste my time. Yeah. We're the preseason number one. I'm still waiting on that trophy. And there's no <laughs> trophy coming for being the top ranked or, or number two team at, at this point. And I, you know, we've, we've been around Dabo Sweeney, you know, a long time now, ever since he got the job here at Clemson. I don't think he's, you know, that's just coach speak. I truly think he believes that. And I think his team believes that. I think I think the one difference this year, guys, and Todd, I'd be interested in your, your perspective on this too, is... I don't believe that they can afford to lose a game like they did in 2016 to Pitt Pittsburgh or last, yeah. last year to Syracuse and still get in. I think the strength of the field, and I know Clemson lost today, but even a one loss, or sorry, a Georgia, Georgia lost today, a one loss, Georgia's not out of it. I think that for them to get back, they have to go undefeated. Completely agree. Here's Terry down the sideline. Tamari and Terry to the end zone, and Florida State will not be shut out 63 yards and the Seminoles crack the scoring sheet well, Tamara and Terry is by far their most explosive playmaker at the receiver spot this was a slam to the inside and he beats Sheridan Jones was a true freshman and you see the explosiveness to the end zone but too little, too late for Florida State. Seven of Terry's 13 career touchdown catches, 40 yards or longer. Now five of them, 60 yards or longer. He is their big play. He's a Clemson kind of receiver. Yeah. He's their Skill version set. of T. Higgins. Yep. Right. Size, hands, speed, all those things. No. So I think, you know, the other thing is who is Clemson going to play in the championship game, right? Virginia losing to Miami on Friday night. That hurts. That hurts them, yes. right? Because Virginia was probably the best team they could have played out of the Coastal. Now, Coastal's a mess. Yeah, yeah. Now it could it could be, you know, uh, North Carolina, which would not actually be the worst thing if they can avenge a one-point, you know, game against Carolina. But it is a mess. <laughs> it's, it's a fair way of putting it. And the Atlantic's no great shakes, but they have Clemson. And we have Molly. Well, Steve, Trevor Lawrence would agree with you guys. He told me they can't afford a loss this year, saying that could derail their run for the playoff, especially with all the negative talk about their ranking and their schedule. And during the bye, he stood in front of his team, and he said, we have a month and a half left of this regular season. That's not a lot of time. We need to lock in, be committed, and do all the little things right if we want to extend our season another couple months. And he said that loss to UNC was a wake-up call. He said they underestimated that opponent, and they are not doing that again. This sort of has been the, the Clemson game plan, though, 
they sort of ramp up as the season goes. You mentioned the loss. They don't usually come out hot out of the starting gate. And they really do seem to grow as a program as these, as these seasons go along and for consecutive trips to the playoffs. They seem to have one game a year. And right? we seem to be at most of them. <laughs> we <laughs> thought it true. might be this one, but no, it's not this one. Right. But but you know what Dabo Dabo Sweeney said this week is we need adversity. We haven't had any adversity. I had no idea how the team was going to respond to adversity. And when they were in a tight ball game on the road against Carolina to find a way to win, even if you win by one point and it's stopped the two-point conversion that kind of adversity for Trevor Lawrence and the rest of the team is something that Dabo Sweeney covets he needs that to build around that was the first game against Carolina that was the first game in Trevor Lawrence's college career in which he'd been in a fourth quarter game where the outcome had not been decided so think about that so opportunity to learn to grow face some adversity Dabo said a lot of teams would have lost that game yeah 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 and so, you know, it was, it was a teaching, coaching moment. Well, look at this. People forget the championship games last year, right? You would think the ACC championship game maybe be close. No, 32 points they went by. The semifinal against Notre Dame, they beat them 30 to 3. Right. And then the unthinkable. Yeah, and then that. that blow game. the doors off of Alabama by 28. So Trevor Lawrence has never been in a close fourth quarter game, right? The Syracuse game, he was hurt. He right. wasn't in there. So exactly. That game against North Carolina was the first time he's been in a fourth quarter game. They're on a 20-game win streak, Clemson is, and Dabo did the math for us. He said we'd have to go 30-0 and 0 to win the national championship this year. So what he's saying is, hey, look, look, look at the whole thing, right? Well, what he's saying is he doesn't think that they can lose a game and make it either. Well, that's true. But he's saying, look at the entire body of work. Don't judge us on the conference or the games this season. Has yeah. anybody gone 30 in a, you know, 30 and 0 to win a couple of national championships back to back? Well, they were the first ones to win the college football playoff national championship, being undefeated. So, for them to do it three years in a row would be amazing. To, to that point, though, it's not a lifetime achievement award. You know, it's got to be based off of what this team is this year. Correct. And what we've seen prior to today, there are questions, and I, I was questioning the talent level. Today, we we've seen a little bit different board. It'll look a little better in the box score tomorrow as we continue Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week. Will Spires is back to punt. Second punt of the day for Clemson. Clemson bounce. What else would happen down at the Florida State three? Well, yesterday, Stephen A. and Max and Molly from first take were on hand. Stephen A. got a crack at Dabo. Are you worried at all that the reigning defending national champions could go undefeated and not have an opportunity to reference to defend your crown in the college football players because they don't put you in there? Are you worried about that? Uh, it, it, to steal your work. That's blasphemous. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what you say? <laughs> Question, question was a lot longer than the answer. <laughs> sort of a, a journalistic no-no. <laughs> but uh, Davo and Stephen A. actually spent some quality time. I don't think he picked them up at the airport. But they spent some extra time together, hanging out a little bit besides just on the set. Was there an apology okay. involved? Uh, apparently, Stephen A. picked Alabama in the championship game. <laughs> and uh, that was part of the reason that Stephen A. And, Molly and Max and the crew of First Take came to Clemson and said, I, uh, we had sort of a bet, I owed an apology. And, and Stephen A actually spoke to the team. Dabble led Stephen A in the locker room to address the Clemson players. And apparently had a little video made up of, of Stephen A talking about Alabama this and Alabama that. And so I think the Clemson players enjoyed that. Uh, not as much as they are enjoying this 42 to 7 score I right noticed, now. I noticed Stephen A came on a weekend where the, the students were were off. They were <laughs> off campus. <laughs> they weren't here. Let's let's make this point very clear. Dabo didn't have Stephen A in there to talk motivation to the team. No. Nope. It was more entertain Sorry, entertainment right. Right. purposes. Uh, Dabo brought up the uh, the Roy bus this week. 
Yeah. He said it was time to dust it off. <laughs> put it through the car wash, the Roy bus. And for those who don't know what the Roy bus is, Roy stands for rest of y'all. As in when Alabama got moved ahead of them to number one, Clemson is back to the rest of y'all. The Roy bus. Get on the bus, Gus. DJ Matthews. On third and two, won't get there. Logan Rudolph made sure of it. Well, we're talking about Logan Rudolph, and he is the, uh, the kid brother of Mason, who was the starting quarterback of the Steelers and was knocked out with a concussion last week. Wish the best for, for Mason. Devlin Hodges out of Sanford will start on Sunday Night Football for the Steelers. They go up against the Chargers. Undrafted grade, before you even ask. <laughs> Got it, thank Undrafted you. Undrafted free agent. <laughs> You had him in the first round, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Alan, Chris, and Michelle are working right now on that. Gets, they were not expecting to see the third-string quarterback for the Steelers on Sunday Night Football against the Chargers. 40, you know, the, the Ohio State, the LSU, Georgia. Nobody's talking about Wisconsin making right. the playoff. But if they, if they go undefeated, go to the Big Ten Championship and beat Ohio State, obviously they would be in... The final four. I had that game of having no chance of being a blowout. Right. I thought that would be a much closer game. Coming up tonight here on ABC, shortly after we get through Penn State and Iowa, we have firsthand experience of Saturday night at Kinnick. Yeah. We know about the magic. We were there a couple of years ago for the Ohio State game. Pick six on the opening offensive snap for the Buckeyes. And so what are we expecting there tonight? Well, Nate Stanley's got to play better than he did a week ago at Michigan. He was awful offensively. Now, everybody's talking about Penn State's offense. He's scoring a bunch of points, 47 points. They haven't played anybody, okay? <laughs> Is that, that seems to be a theme well, around the game. Around well, they played Pitt, right? It was 17-10. Yes. They, you know, neither I think this is going to be more of a defensive struggle game than most people think. Neither one of these teams has given up more than 17 points in a single game this year. Yeah, Penn State has struggled in some spots. They, they trailed Buffalo at halftime. So, interesting to see how that plays out tonight. Todd, any thoughts on Maryland? Maryland looked like a good win until they got smoked by Purdue today. <laughs> now Purdue looks like a little bit of a better win. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. With the next three games for Penn State, right? Yes. This, this game, they're going to play Michigan at home next week in primetime, and then on the road at Michigan State. I think Michigan State's a better football team than what they're putting on tape yes. today, especially defensively. But we'll know a lot more about Penn State after this three-game stretch. Michigan yeah. really struggled at Illinois today. And I'll be seated here. At, at Ohio State. Well, they got a lot of work to do to make that game meaningful. Then we put the ball front, carrier there. That defensive front, you can put up there, with, you know, some of the top tier talent to, in terms of the entire country. Yeah. That's Leonard Warner, the junior linebacker. Personal foul. Offense number 14, unnecessary roughness. 15 yard penalty. First down. We saw Marvin Wilson, the defensive tackle, come and help uh, Warner off the field. Marvin Wilson, I, I think he's a, a, a piece that hopefully for Willie Taggart hangs around here, doesn't decide to go to the NFL, but you could build on next season. Uh, he's a leader, a captain, and a great football player, but if I had to bet, I, I would say he's probably going to take his talents to the NFL. Marvin Wilson's a guy, his first experience, his first visit to Florida State was a Clemson game. And the Seminoles lost that game 37-34, but Wilson said the atmosphere at Doak Walker that game was a top five moment for him. He didn't even play. He wasn't even on the team, but that's where he first fell in love with Florida State football. Thoughts on some prospects for him, Todd? He's their best interior pass rusher. And we look in the NFL right now, and it's really, you would rather have an interior pass rusher that can get, get home and disrupt the quarterback than an edge guy. And so I, I agree with Brian. I think he's going to wind up leaving after this year. I'm not saying he's a first-round talent, but he's not going to last till the third day. So we talk about first or second, maybe third round at the worst. But again, if he continues to improve as an interior pass rusher, that's, that's where you make the money. Here's where I'm going to channel my Mel Kuyper. Doesn't he have him 14th on his big board tag? Yeah, Mel gets ahead of himself sometimes. <laughs> Jonah Todd knows every player that 
Mel has where he has them. That'd be hard to do. Not, not until it's close to the draft when they make me look at his mock draft. <laughs> hey, so let's look at Marvin Wilson. What jumps out to you guys of the 300-pounder? 311, what, six foot five. What's odd about that picture right there? Why is he wearing 21? The uniform so number for Dion? 21. For Dion. Yeah, well, that would make sense, but except he's a defensive tackle. So we asked him about the, and I figured, you know, the equipment manager gave it to me, and I said, so why 21? And all he said was savage. He says, I'm a savage. And the three of us look at each other, and Molly's shaking her head. Uh, Mo Molly's the only one. and a one. half of us got it. <laughs> 21 savage, of course, people. A lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> I had no idea. Maybe Molly can sing us the break to the 21 savage. Rescue us. Got to be careful with those lyrics, Molly. Other than the word a lot. Yeah, that's right, Steve. I know that reference was a little bit over your head. I'm closer in age to some of these guys. We had a little fun with it. Uh, we'll bring you back here. The old-timers still calling the game. Oh, well, Jeff thought he was the Heisman frontrunner. It hasn't gone as smoothly as he wanted, uh, but he came out today. He was efficient, right? We heard that word efficient from Dabo, from Tony Elliott, and the offensive staff. They wanted him to be efficient. They wanted the offense to be more efficient, and they were right from the jump, scoring up, going up 35 nothing in the first half and Florida State's back to James Blackman quarterback hands off to Cam Akers Alex Hornibrook had played the last four possessions and Akers the ball carrier there they're going back and forth I keep waiting for Jordan Travis to check in the game he'd be the third string quarterback for Florida State I think it's a, you know, these are the little things, but watching Trevor Lawrence in the second half, he hasn't played a whole lot, but he's been on the sideline talking to players. He's talking to coaches. He's got his head in the game, trying to learn. He's still a young player. He's still getting better as a quarterback, which is scary to think. But uh, he's been engaged. And you know what? He's had to, we talked about this at the Open, he's had to take more leadership, right? When you lose guys like Cleveland Farrell and yes. Christian Wilkins, and you don't have, you know, players to, to assume that leadership role on Hunter defense, on offense too. they look at the quarterback. And when you're the best player on the best team in the country, you know, you're going to have that on your shoulders. And Trevor Lawrence may not be as vocal as those other guys, but he has to assume that leadership. just too far for Terry. Todd, I remember during the draft process last year, we were having some fun. It was a hypothetical that if Lawrence was available, would have been available. He would have been the number one overall pick of the draft a year ago. I, I think it's very likely. Now, the, the only wild card there is that Cliff Kingsbury, you know, right. come, came in with the system and, right. and, and had his guy. So, but I, I think if you pulled the, the every all 32 teams, I think the vast majority would have said that Lawrence was, was the number one player in the class. Coming uh, coming off of that Alabama game, the way he played, that was special. And I still think he's he would be the first overall pick ahead of Tua. You know, everything's about tanking for Tua, the Dolphins, the Redskins, etc. I think he still would be, despite some of the weaknesses that we've seen in his game. And I think next year, when he is eligible, he'll wind up being the first overall pick. That Florida State drive was six plays. That was the longest drive they've had all day. In the country, the smoking pig. I know every visit we make to Clemson, we find some opportunity to either stop at the pig or have the pig stop by us. On Clemson home games, the smoking pig sells over 1,500 pounds of meat. They're only we eat a third of it. <laughs> They're only open three days a week. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I, tell you, I, I used to be a pulled pork guy, yeah. which I still love pulled pork. Right. But, uh, you know, McShay, I think last year, McShay and I had a uh, chopped brisket oh. sandwich. Right. Oh, yeah. my gosh. And, and we all agree. We drive by it on the way on the way back tonight, too, by the way. And yet we're all amazed how good the coleslaw is, right? Well, oh. the coleslaw is impressive because, you know, there's a lot of attention to detail there. It's much like Dabo, you know. Uh, they don't put the uh, sauce on until the day of. So right. Chop, stays, chop it up. Right. stays yeah, crunchy. Exactly. It's really fine chop, but stays crunchy. That's a key, Levy. I know keys. It gets mushashed if you put it in, like, three days before and let it sit around. That's right. It no gets more. what? Mushash <laughs> pass interference. I'm Defense sorry. number 29, 15-yard penalty, first down. Mushy. Oh, thank Translation. you. Translation. Translation. I don't have to Google it. 
But I find after my three days visiting Clemson, I crave a piece of salmon. Anybody, <laughs> anybody else? Can we mix a little fish in with our diet? Well, McShane and I had fish last night. You could have had fish, but you didn't. In the steakhouse, I have steak. I'm traditionalist. <laughs> Tyson Pumachan is at quarterback for Clemson. True freshman, Bridgeport, Connecticut. And Pumachan's on the run there. He'll be short of the first down for Bridgeport, Connecticut, which is not too far from the ESPN's worldwide headquarters in Bristol. I was watching him throw the ball uh, down there on the field before the game, and he's got some zip on the ball. Obviously, we can see his running ability and his size, 6'3", 220 pounds, but uh, I was really impressed with him throwing the football. I'm trying to get Ben and Tom to count up how many players Clemson has used today. See if they approach the 111 they used at Charlotte. I don't even know how that is feasible. They average 81 players per game. First of all, they're blowing some people out. Got it. I didn't know you had 111 on the team. <laughs> can't do it on the road. You can't travel so many. Uh, producer Billy Pal Paladino says they played 75 so far today. Frank Ladson on the receiving end there. I believe that's a Frank's first catch. True freshman from Miami. Clemson does attract them from all over. We mentioned California, too. Quite a run that Dabo Sweeney and these Clemson Tigers are on. I think... Maybe as you look at their schedule going forward, maybe the most difficult game on their schedule, believe it or not, is a, is a date with Wake Forest here in Death Valley on their quest to get another national championship. That's November 16th. Now you would make that tougher than the rivalry game against South Some Carolina. Else, what South Carolina did today yeah. might change things, but when is the last time Clemson lost to South Carolina? Can you tell me? It's been quite a while. <laughs> Got, I got my best people on it. They don't lose to South Carolina. No. But here you go. I mean, this is, you know, this game right here against Wake Forest. I agree, but you got to look at Wake Forest schedule, too. I mean, Utah State by yeah. three. North Carolina by, by touchdown, basically. Well, Boston not, College by three. I'm not saying it's a strong schedule. That's, no, that's, that's the, the, point. the hardest they, spot. Yeah, that's like, that's why I think they can't afford to lose any of them. Wake plays at Louisville tonight in about 45 minutes from now. I got to be honest, I didn't know Wake was ranked. They're at 19th in the country. Mm -hmm. That's good for the ACC street cred. Taking a shot at the end zone. And it is knocked away. Asante Samuel was beaten for a couple of big plays early on. Samuel's father, by the same name, an 11-year NFL career, starting with the Patriots, the Eagles, the Falcons. And they will attempt the field goal, and it will be Steven Sawicki. He has yet to attempt a field goal for Clemson. Transfer from NC A&T. He's kept a couple extra points, and this will be a 26-yard field goal attempt. He boots it through. Pacific Life game summary, and it will read all Tigers 45 to 7. Yeah, they got back to the balance running the football with Travis Etienne. He got nicked up a little bit in the first quarter, but was able to come back. And the one two punch of he and then Jay Dixon was effective. And then uh, pretty much perfect day outside of one interception, one mistake by Trevor Lawrence. The rest of it was smooth sailing. I'd love to have a coaching moment, even in a 45-7 game. And they will. As the clock winds, under five minutes left to play. Here in the fourth quarter, all second-ranked Tigers and the defending champs home here today in Clemson. So it is no coincidence the four of us all have a touch of pink on. In Molly's case, a lot of pink. <laughs> can find her all day long. It is October, and that is Breast Cancer Awareness yeah. Month, and we want to do our part and, and uh, tell the folks at home that we're thinking about those who are dealing with that, that horrendous disease right now. So. Yeah, it means a lot to me and my family. My mom had breast cancer. I know there's so many people out there uh, that are dealing with it, have dealt with it, and has touched their life, and uh, always a special time when we get to, uh, to spend time with those folks and, and pay a little bit of homage in October. <laughs> Board, 
And Steve, we picked the perfect game for this. Florida State's cheerleaders have pink pom-poms. Clemson's cheerleaders have pink bows in their hair. So everyone is supporting breast cancer awareness. One in eight women in the U.S. will get breast cancer in their lifetime. So this is a great cause that we're giving awareness for. Put some pink on people in October. Think about it every month. It's focused on, of course, in the month of October. Greece, you wonder the last time that South Carolina beat Clemson? Yes. My best people, I put them on it, got back to me. 2013. Wow. I'm not a, I'm not I'm not a, a worried about the, the personal games. foul. Roughing the passer with targeting. Defense number six. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. The play is under further review. Mike Jones. Redshirt freshman from Nashville, the shot on James Blackman. Yeah, and that was uh, the, the prototypical, right, launch. You saw him launch, and you saw him use the crown of the helmet, which you can hit uh, a player anywhere on their body with the crown of the helmet, and that beat targeting doesn't have to be the head or neck area. Right, that was one of the changes, yep. Yep, and so it doesn't really matter if he hits him in the head or neck area, which it looks like he kind of hit him in the neck, but see the crown there? Yep. And the launch. Good launch, yep. Out of the crouch position. Gosh, James Blackman, he takes some of the uh, wickedest shots of any quarterback in college football because of the line, obviously, is one problem. His size is 6'5", and how slight he is at 195. He's Wire. just a, a huge target. And it came up talking about quarterbacks playing behind, a, you know, a struggling offensive line, and some people were asking you about it. He said, well, yeah, maybe one or two guys. Struggling not not all five at the same time. Well, Kendall Browse, you see him standing right there He looked at me and said you you've been through this before and I said coach honestly uh, No, I have never been on a, an offense or team that had this many question marks on the offensive line Maybe one, you know, but you can account for that right you slide the protection sure. get a chip, you know Manage that maybe two on one side, but not five and they just don't have any answers up front right now And, and I give James Blackman credit. He's he has he's not played great um, but I give him credit for one thing, and that's toughness. Yeah. This kid is tough as nails, because uh, to take some of the shots he's taken today, right. he does that every week. And if you're a little gun shy, it's understandable then, because he's taken so many hits, he knows it's coming. When Hornibrook started last week, he was sacked eight times. That's a Florida State record for their own quarterback getting sacked in one game. That was against NC State. See the call here. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. The foul for roughing passer is still in force. 15 yards, first down. So they don't pick up the flag, but the player is not ejected and remains a clean slate as far as targeting. So the highlight of my day so far today, Greece? Yeah. I walked in, very nice a young lady doing security outside the press box here. Yeah. And she said, excuse me, she said, are you Bob Greasy? <laughs> to me, all right? So, now I wasn't gonna help her either, okay? But I thought she meant at least, at least she was at Brian, I would've given her a break, but she wanted to know if I was Bob Greasy. And I said, uh, no, I understand he's a very nice man. So are you taking me out and buying me dinner me. tonight, Dad? <laughs> Not tonight, maybe tomorrow night. <laughs> Every other night. Uh, God, I could use a loan. Yeah. Please, Dad, send money. <laughs> down there so Florida State will maintain possession Dabo still coaching him up and he wants a timeout he wants to he wants to look at that last play let's go back and take a look and he was ruled down Catch there by McDonald, two feet, knee down, and that's the right call. It's good Clemson call. is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed catch. That play is under further review. Nothing if not consistent, Dabo. 
He's playing the full 60. Don't give it in. Playing the full 60. <laughs> Whether America wants him to or not. <laughs> Mentioned Wake Forest. They'll go up against Louisville. That'll be a good one. On the ACC Network tonight. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Clemson has charged a timeout. 30 seconds. It's about the only thing Dabo lost today. Right. He'll, he'll be bothered by that, too. Clemson is in search of their 750th all-time victory here today. I like their chances of getting it. Uh, that would put them among 15 programs in the history, the 150-year history of college football with 750 wins, and they'd be the first ACC program to get there. Well on their way. Here's Blackman. Going to be dropped back for a sack. It's a loss of nine on the play. That's Kane Patterson, the true freshman out of Brentwood, Tennessee. And, you know, we were talking with Dabo Sweeney, and he was telling us he wanted to get these young linebackers more reps. Kane Patterson and, and Balen Spector, they wanted to get him in the game early, and he was encouraging Brent Venables to just put him in there and play him. That's been their philosophy. But put him in crunch time when it matters, and, and Kane Pat Zane Patterson has been doing that more and more, and uh, he's a bright young star on this defense. Third and 13. Blackman still throwing and complete the P.J. Matthews. Did a good job to go up to get it. 18 yards on the plate, and it's a first down for Florida State. He's falling, and Matthews could not hang on. Mike Jones had the coverage for Clemson. We watched some of these, these quarterbacks for Florida State. Alex Hornibrook had an unbelievable throw last week, throwing off balance, and now James Blackman. It's one of the craziest throws I've ever seen. Yeah, last week was unbelievable by Hornibrook, but, but they're under so much duress that they don't want to give up on the play that they're off, a lot of times thrown from a foxhole. Uh, this season getting more and more looks more and more touches in this game in the second half and you see the speed to finish albeit against the uh, second team defense for Clemson kicking game has been an adventure for Florida straight there's Ricky Aguayo field goals at home have been the issue not on the road not a neutral site not extra points that one is put through and it's 45 14 with 241 left you know, coming into this season the the question marks for Clemson were not on the offensive side they were on the defensive side with all the losses on that defensive line but I think it's been the most surprising uh, thing really is that this de this defense has has stood up uh, as we take a look at today's crunch time brought to you by Cheese, it's the defensive line for, for Clemson, right? It's them plugging the run game for Florida State and Cam Akers, not allowing them an inch. And being in the gaps, you got Pinckney, Davis, Jordan Williams, the linebackers have been in position. James Skalski and, and Chad Smith, they've driven this offensive line back and given no room to run for Akers. And it's a great sign for Clemson, which a uh, question mark coming into the season has really been a statement through the first six games. Chris, have you picked out a spot for us tonight? ABC, your Penn State, Iowa. Yeah, we're going to we got Florida, LSU. The big night, Levy. Get on that plane. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. 
<laughs> See how fast Ben can drive. I, I, I'll tell you what, I'll watch LSU anywhere, anytime this season. I just love, I love watching Coach O on the game day this morning. Yes. Right, and how he has an offense now scoring 54 a game? Be honest, we, we had Joe Burrow last year. We had him live, we sat down and talked to him. Like, you know, liked a lot of things about him. Did you ever see this coming from the way he's playing no. and how aggressive and confident he is? No. Onside kick. No quit for Seminoles. And it is recovered by Clemson. I'll tell you what did jump out though, Todd, was the confidence that borders on being cocky. And we saw that right after the Texas game, the wave. I think you got to have a little bit of that. And he's going to go up against a great Florida defense tonight. And Todd Grantham, you know, is going to have something cooked up for him. But I think the, the, the person that nobody's talking about on LSU's team, we're talking about Justin Jefferson on, is Clyde Edwards Alaire. Like we watched a yes. little tape on him last week, Todd. I mean, that, that guy is a game breaker. He is quick. Uh, why? Tonight could be a Heisman kind of game for Burrow, right? If he, he's got to be in the no conversation. No question. Against that defensive front seven. But if he does something tonight against Florida, uh, again, if he wasn't already there, you got to throw him right at the top. It's amazing how much college football is not about you or your team, but about the level of competition you play against. Right. And Clemson gets the, the negative side of that with their conference and their schedule. Yeah. That's kind of a blessing and a curse. I mean, they, they're fully capable and should run the table, right? Yep. And Dabo says, hey, I'll win every game by one point. One point. And if they win the ACC, they're probably in. I mean, they're in. There's no question. Undefeated Clemson is in. Yeah, well, and Todd, you say, you know, it can't be a, uh, a legacy uh, gift either. It has to be based on the merits of what they've done this season. Right. But I, I still think that that committee, it's still human beings. Yep. They watched what what Trevor Lawrence and what T. Higgins and what Justin Ross and some of these players did to Alabama last year. So even if their resume was undefeated and win the ACC and they didn't really beat anybody, uh, and, they, and they were, let's say they were probably the fifth best, I still think they get it. Clemson still looking to throw. And instead, Kumachan will run. Third and eight, very close to the first down mark. Tonight, after Florida LSU on ESPN, it's Sports Center with Michael Eve and Kenny Maine. That'll be a big show. They'll break down the big football game on Saturday. Yankees Astros game one, Nationals Cardinals game two, Sports Center after football. Note that start time. I'll bet my life it will not start at 11 o'clock Eastern time tonight. Sound like a good experience. That, that that's one. the thing I am most sure <laughs> of. That Florida LSU will not be done by 11 o'clock Eastern, so Sports Center can come on on time. Sports Center, Michael and Kenny after football on ESPN and the ESPN app. You know, you start to go through, at this time of year, start to go through scenarios, right? And looking at this top four in the playoff yeah. predictors and all that, right? And, you know, a lot of people think Ohio State has been the best team in the country. I tend to agree with them, right? So you can't, it's not completely out of the realm to think Ohio State runs the table therein, right? Alabama certainly could run the table in the West and probably meet Georgia in the East. And, and one of those two teams you would have to say would be in. You know, LSU, the same thing. I put them in the same boat as Alabama. And in fact, I might have a little bit ahead of them of Alabama, uh, but Oklahoma, the win today over Texas, right? That is significant. If they run the table in the Big 12, you would see, think that they would have to be in. So, and then Notre Dame is working out there, right? With that one loss to Georgia. Now, Georgia losing certainly hurts that, but I don't think that anybody would say that, that Notre Dame is, is outside the top six right now. So if they run the table, I mean, there's a lot more actors in this play this year than there was a year ago. When they got to 111 players that game at Charlotte, both Herb Street boys got into the game. That's Ty on the left, Jake on the right. And uh, keep waiting for them to jump into this one. Come on, Dabble, put them in, 45-14. Uh, Herbie, along with Chris Fowler, and Maria Taylor. They will call the big one tonight 
Florida and LSU, Baton Rouge. We got a, a Death cool Valley, that, by the way? Death Valley day night doubleheader. Death yeah. Valley here, and Death Valley in Baton Rouge. To be able to see two of your sons, your sons in uniforms. Of course, Dabo's got a couple of his sons on the team. Brent Venables has Brent a couple, Venables, yeah. couple of kids on the team as well. So, uh, hey, they proclaim themselves a family affair here in Clemson. That's kind of how Dabo runs the program. We got a sense of that too. Yeah. I think that's really cool. I mean, we were talking with, Jay, uh, with uh, Brent Venables. And just a long foul ball there, but, but uh, you know, he, his son Jake Venables is a redshirt freshman linebacker and, and it was almost like when he was talking with coach Venables he didn't want to say anything nice you know but but he couldn't help himself because he's like listen I'm not gonna be one of those dads that says something nice about Mike I'm hard on him and anybody that knows Brent Venables knows that he would be hard harder on his kid than anybody else on the defense but he says you know what he's got a chance he right. could be a pretty right. good player right. he said he impressed me yeah <laughs> which is really cool you know I, you yeah. hope your son comes in and does well, and then when he comes in and does maybe better than you expected, that's, yeah. that's amazing. And I don't want to be that dad either, but the Chiefs are playing in a really big flag football game What's tomorrow their record? morning. <laughs> <laughs> We're up to four and one. We bounced back from that tough loss. Special team coordinators got to get there tomorrow. The boys that didn't take the loss too well, which I'm okay with, so we'll see. <laughs> but it's all perspective, right? <laughs> As long as, they're, as long as they're playing and enjoying and around this great game of football. Final 44 seconds left in the game. And James Blackman's still in there. Dropped. Ontario Wilson had the opportunity. And they will turn it over on downs. Charge timeout, Florida State, their second, 30 seconds. Well, he's trying to get some more reps in for his guys. Well, all that uh, positive momentum for Willie Taggart, you know, after these back-to-back -back, uh, ACC wins, beat NC State, it was a good win. Beat Louisville. You know, you, you don't want to look back. Even the Louisiana Monroe, they missed an extra point. Yeah. That's the reason Florida State was able to beat them. Blew a big lead against Boise State. Yeah. Well, they've got things to figure out. Defensively, they've changed schemes, and that's a difficult thing. And then offensively, I don't know that they have uh, you know, the horses up front. They'll be consistent. Clemson's not done yet. Down to the six-yard line. I just wonder where the mental state of the Florida State players is right now. This will be a tough one to bounce back. You felt like you were moving in the right direction. Look, they're not going to see this kind of talent. They're not going to see this kind of talent again yeah. opposite them on the football field. But can they turn this back and, and get some positive momentum going? Zeros on the clock. And this game was over shortly after the singing of the national anthem. Clemson wins 45-14. Our producers, Bill Palladino and Josh Hoffman. Our director, Mike Schwab. Todd McShay, Molly McGrath, Brian Greasy, and our entire outstanding crew. I'm Steve Levy. It's all Clemson here tonight. Send you to